Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 235. 235. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. We saw them at the D23 Expo. They had these huge, bullet, really big balloon <laughs> displays of Groot and I believe Adat. Adat. Yes, mm-hmm. it was gigantic. Very cool. And they had done a contest for a stay at um, either Walt Disney World or Disneyland, which I thought was really fun. So check out their site for 2018 dates and packages, as well as to book current discounts at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, and Alani. Um, And they are a full service travel agency with a specialty in Disney and Universal, all Disney. We should also mention it is almost time for Halloween. Just next month, the first Halloween parties start at Walt Disney World. In just a few weeks, which seems crazy. It doesn't feel like fall at all. Um, And then we're also going to see Disneyland Halloween when that kicks off, which is we weren't planning it, but all of a sudden it's like we have to see it. We will talk about that fully next week. So we're going from Halloween in August to Christmas in July. Um, We went to Disney's Old Key West Resort because they had a Christmas in July event on uh, the 25th of July. Which is actually five months from Christmas, the real Christmas. So maybe it should be June 25th. That's what I was thinking, Like Christmas in June, but that doesn't sound so good. But who knew? I mean, apparently they had this event last year. We had no idea somehow that uh, you caught wind of it, that it was happening. And we decided at the very last, like that day, we decided, okay, let's go there and check it out. And I'm glad we did. It was great. I mentioned that I had actually seen it on Twitter, that there was going to be a character here and that they were going to be doing um, some decorating and such. So it was way more than I personally expected. And it was Santa Goofy. I was just waiting in the lobby, not knowing which character it was. And I was very pleased to see Santa Goofy. Apparently last year it was Donald Duck, but uh, this fits in perfectly with Christmas in July. And here he is. I like the nice little sign. And your favorite part of this whole meet and greet will be coming up very soon. Well, I I like the sign because it can cover the face, but (laughs) (laughs) somebody did it in front of me. So I thought, that's a great idea. It was and, funny. Yes. And uh, so this was a lot of fun. There weren't too many guests there. Uh, you know, it's the middle of the day. Very hot. At Epcot. And oh, there I am. There you are. And uh, you that, asked him for that. Yay. Uh, <laughs> That's what we like. So now <laughs> I know how I want all of my pictures. Characters should always have a round face cover. Uh <laughs> you know, to cover the face. Well, that's not very nice. I like to see your full mm. likeness there. But uh, but it was funny. I thoroughly enjoyed meeting Santa Goofy. And here he is going back away for the day. He only did two sets, 20 minutes each. And, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure I understand. It was it was tremendously hot, but he's warming his hands by the, the non-existent fire there. No, so it looks like there is a fire. Is there a real fire? Yeah, wow. well, I don't know how. I, I've never been totally next to it, So, but it looks, I see some flames. So I'm not sure why you would have flames in the middle of a 90 some odd degree day but okay theming theming it's christmas theming and what we're looking at now is the scavenger hunt you had to go around and find these pink flamingos and write down the names on all of them and if you found them all you got a little prize and uh, and we're going to show you the prize it wasn't that hard there were a few that were sort of uh, difficult to see and there is the prize we got a nice little button and you're able to take your picture with more of these signs in front of the christmas tree but we didn't cover our faces we did it wrong and all of the flamingos had names like sunny snowflake like it was like hot and cold so i thought that was fun so now we're at disney springs for more christmas in july goodness (laughs) yes and uh this ends tomorrow which is july 30th so if you put it up today the 29th then you got one more day to uh, go try some food uh and go meet santa and all that i have to say i was thoroughly impressed with what Disney Springs did for this Christmas in July. Much more than I thought. As a matter of fact, some of the decorations you're about to see would rival what they do on the real Christmas, in my opinion. Actually, I like some of the decorations better. Like if you look at the carousel, I don't know if we'll be looking at that. We they will, ha- okay. indeed, we will. <laughs> There's little Santa hats on the on the um, horses, so we'll see that. And I won't mention everything, but yeah, they have the, uh, what are they called? The light bulbs necklaces here. Yeah, and, n- uh, nice oh, merchandise. I like the, uh, the flamingos. I don't know where they got them, but well, maybe Oriental Trading Company or something, you know, but I thought those were so much fun. And this is what you were talking about uh, a second ago. I think it's wonderful. All the horses have Santa hats. Such great detail here at Disney Springs. And there is Santa. We met Santa. If you've ever gone to the uh, Swan and Dolphin 
resorts over the holidays, they have like vacationing Santa. So this is similar in that he is in more of a tropical outfit. But he's not wearing shorts. The the other vacation Santa has sandals and shorts, and this one has pants. Oh. Always good to have Santa with pants. Anyway, now we're going to move on to Epcot because Epcot had some... Uh, special merchandise that we saw also uh, at the very last minute from Shanghai Disneyland from the grand opening of Shanghai Disneyland and I'm I'm actually drinking out of one of these mugs right now I'm drinking my coffee as we record this show we each got a, a mug and I guess uh, somebody had mentioned that these were discounted in Shanghai now that the grand opening the first year is over but you know it's not like we're flying to Shanghai to buy 70% off merchandise reasonably or something. Pri- none of this I stuff was, was good, uh, overpriced know. it was actually quite reasonable and the mugs uh, were $14 yeah. and with a Disney visa discount you can't get a pass holder discount but if you have a Disney visa in the China Pavilion you can get your 10% off if you spend 50 so you know, that meant I had to get one extra pin to make it over the 50. See, they, they made out with me. It was worth me. it. It was worth it. It was totally worth it. And what I especially like is the way they pack your merchandise. Each item is in its own little bag. Very, very nicely done. I, I was so impressed with the uh, packing of our mugs and our uh, and the pins. It was uh, phenomenal. I I thought the merchandise, like the, um, the Barbie was like 25 and... The, you know, it was in the 20s for the plush. I mean, the pins were standard pin prices here, but I thought very reasonable on everything else. This is uh, one of the ones we bought here. It's like a little snow globe pin I thought was cool. That was actually the one I had to get to get over 50, and that's the one I really wanted, the grand opening one. And see what I mean, how they pack them up all nicely, and then they put these, and each one has its own bag, and very nice. The manager was very surprised how well the merchandise was doing. He did not expect it. So I'm hoping they'll bring more of the Shanghai here. Oh, he said, he said they will bring more. When we were there, we just, we literally watched it fly yes. off the shelves. They, they couldn't keep it stocked fast enough. And he was enough. shocked. So I would like to see Japan also. In <laughs> France, Tokyo. Disneyland Paris merchandise. <laughs> the one thing about Paris merchandise here is that they do have Epcot World Showcase branded items you can find in Paris. So they get a little of that, but um, I would especially like to see Gelatoni and Stella Lou here. Well, speaking of Disneyland Paris, our good friend Axel from the Curious Axel YouTube channel and uh, and personal good friend was uh, was at Disneyland Paris early to check out the new Pirates of the Caribbean, the refurbished edition, and he did an amazing, an amazing job for us. He did a standalone video and he did this segment giving his thoughts. What, what do you have to say about this? I want to go back to Paris, but we keep going back to Disneyland now. Yes, so. <laughs> yes it's but your idea. Paris, I know. I really I want to see. Paris too. <laughs> I wanted to see Halloween at uh, Disneyland, but I can't wait to get back to Paris. So hopefully that will be soon as well. But we never everyone. need to go ever now. Now that uh, Curious Axel is doing such a great no, job, we never not, need to go. That's not true. That's not true. We <laughs> have to go back so we can see Axel and everyone. That's true. Anyway, here he is, Curious Axel, talking all about his uh, experience on the all-new Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland Paris. Hi everybody, welcome to another Paris segment here on Marseps Weekly. And today is a special one. Well, special one. Everybody with an Infinity Pass, that's like the highest annual pass, gets a preview of the new Pirates ride today. And I'm very lucky that I'm amongst the first maybe a thousand to see the new Pirates ride. So I'm really excited. Let's go at it. Jack. Hello there. Captain, what happened? You just got into the ride and you're already out. I have peculiar ways about me. Yes, 
ses nombreuses et précieuses récompenses. A-t-on jamais vu carrière plus rentable Je regarde, oui. Ah, Gérard. J'accepte humblement ce magnifique trésor. En récompense, une vie de Hélène. All right, honest first impression. This thing is awesome. It is, it's truly an amazing ride. I enjoyed doing it four, maybe five times, I don't know, but it's amazing. You be sure to come check it out because I'm sure that no matter what camera, it cannot catch the, the magic that's going inside of there. So be sure to check it out. It's truly amazing. I'll see you again. We'll Real hop in, soon. We'll hop out, we'll hop in, we'll hop out, it'll be fun. What an awesome job. Once again, thanks so much to uh, to Axel for the, the great correspondence work there at Disneyland Paris. And uh, Axel will be here in January. I would love to get back there before January, but we will see Axel here and you guys will be talking to princesses. What a, wait a minute. While I you, sit there. you will also. <laughs> Axel, I'm not talking. He's already told me what he's going to tell Rapunzel <laughs> that she has the finest bathroom in all of uh, of the Magic Kingdom. You the, should the be Tango saying toilets. that. that there's yes. no surprise. We're to already that now. working on things. Yes, so. <laughs> indeed. So anyway, we're planning to do the princess breakfast with them, um, and hopefully we'll see them quite a bit while they're here. I hope so. And this was a really great segment. So thank you, and check out the curious. Axel YouTube channel for more from Disneyland Paris. So now we're going to talk about the individual show scene, some of the new changes. I'm so glad they left the original captain up there on the Wicked Wench, though, because in all the other versions, uh, he was changed to uh, Barbosa. We are going to see Barbosa, but a much, uh, a very different Barbosa will be coming up. And I just want to mention this footage is from uh, Philip over at DLRP Fans, and they also have a, a very good YouTube channel. So uh, they're at Disneyland Paris. What quite a great bit. friends we have! Mm -hmm. Philip actually contacted us and said said you know we'd like to send you some footage to use and it was very nice of him he said so, uh, over the last year or so he occasionally sends us some footage and uh, photos so we have some great close-ups there is the redhead the very new redhead holding the gun there and here is the barbosa figure which i think is spectacular that i think that one is it, probably the best of the figures that i've seen uh, as far as all the footage, it's really phenomenal. And I, and I, you know, what Axel said, I'm sure is true. No video can do justice. I think we really need to see this in person. So uh, we should. I know you were joking, and we will definitely I'm not, get I back. Wasn't, no, to, no, no. Or There's I no was, joking. I was joking. No joking. <laughs> but we will definitely get back to Disneyland Paris and see all this ourselves. It does look awesome. So uh, anyway, and all this stuff is going to be happening, by the way, at Walt Disney World and Disneyland. I know there's a lot of controversy because of the changes, but... Um, you know. And he speaks. It's interesting to hear Jack Sparrow speak French. And there was, you know, some people said they didn't think he should speak French, but it is in France. It's in France. So, <laughs> you know, you get a little bit of uh, French and a little bit of English, which is the way I think it, it's really good there. As it should be. And we just wanted to thank Philip also for this uh, this footage. Check out his YouTube channel. I especially like his, he doesn't just do ride videos. I enjoy especially his segments with Jordy, especially the underwear one made me laugh so much because Disneyland <laughs> Paris does Disney underwear Is differently. Is there a bad underwear video? <laughs> no, there's no other underwear videos that I know of as far as Disney. So anyway, also <laughs> thanks to a Curious Axel. Both those guys did great for us. We really appreciate it. Now we're going to move on to the D23 Expo. We just got back from that. It was in Anaheim. It was the fifth expo. We have been to them all. And this one actually was my very favorite of all the expos. Was it? I, I think, think my. It was. I think the first was my favorite, but because this of probably, the less crowdedness, it but was, there was much there less was crowded. Much, that was a good lot, lot of uh, there was content. A lot, good content here. What we're going to be talking about? They just came at you with so much information, especially about the parks and the resorts, and um, so as far as content. Uh, this was really a, a big expo. This and you year. just saw the huge line waiting to get in. It was very popular. This was Saturday. And we're going to just talk about the Florida announcements now. So we're going to uh, hear little bits of the announcements and then we'll react uh, at the end. So here is the very first announcement that we're going to talk about today. This was uh, coming to the Disney's uh, Hollywood Studios. Who out there loves Mickey Mouse? <laughs> 
who doesn't love Mickey? And that's why I'm so over the top to excited to tell you about our first Mickey theme ride ever. <laughs> Many of you asked us, who do you imagine is going to create the next original story for an attraction like you did for Pirates of the Caribbean? It's a small world and a haunted mansion. And when are you guys going to create the next attraction theme song like you did for those same favorites? Well, I'm happy to tell you, we're doing it right now. Our most classic of our classic characters, Mickey and Minnie, are getting their own state-of-the-art major family attraction with a new story and singable and lovable theme song. And that song is already in my head, it's stuck in my head, I can't get it out, and that's a good thing, right? Uh, you know, I've had the honor and privilege of working in a lot of attractions in my almost 40 years in Imagineering, and I can always tell in my gut when we have something really special. And everybody, this is going to be really, really special. After all, it's Mickey's first ride, and that means we really have to deliver for him, right? And for you. Talk about a daunting responsibility, especially when you consider that few people have experienced life without Mickey. Still, as Bob alluded to, no human being has ever been able to literally step to the movie screen and join Mickey and his friends in their animated world. Until now. In Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, you'll get to ride inside the wacky and unpredictable world of a Mickey Mouse cartoon short. Think of it as your own fish out of water story in which you're the star and anything can happen. But not to worry. When the unexpected does happen, and you know it will, Mickey and Minnie are there to help keep you out of trouble. But you'll continue to slip right through their gloved fingers as your zippy zany out of control adventure takes you through many surprising twists and turns, dazzling visual effects, and truly mind-boggling transformations that happen before your very eyes, you're not going to believe what you see. What do you say we want to ride? Ride? You got it, Mickey. The fun begins when you'll see the premiere of a new cartoon short featuring Mickey and Minnie getting ready for a picnic. As they head off to the park in their little red car, they drive alongside a train and discover that the engineer is goofy. Then something happens. I'm not going to tell you what, but suffice it to say, it'll lead to one magical moment when you'll get to step into the movie screen and onto Goofy's train. With Goofy as your engineer, what could possibly happen? <laughs> this all looks and sounds like you'll need 3D glasses, right? Wrong. We're doing this by creating for the first time ever. Trust me, you've never seen anything like this. A totally new experience we're calling Two and a half D. No glasses required. <laughs> We're actually inventing new technologies that turn up the flat world of a colorful cartoon short into a dimensional display of amazingness. By the way, these videos were shot by a team member with a smartphone in our mock-up space. You know how the Mickey shorts have a very stylized and flat design? What we're doing is flat out bringing to life that flat world in an unbelievably unflat but flat looking way. <laughs> Make sense? Let's just say we're not letting any real world logic or physics get in our way. No way. So this does sound amazing. I don't even know what to think after hearing all that. Although what they didn't say is this will be in the location that currently uh, is the Great Movie Ride. So we will have to lose the Great Movie Ride to have the new attraction. Right. And not only are we losing the Great Movie Ride, but many of you know August 13th will be the last day for that. So we plan to be there on August 13th. Um, so it's really the end of... the an era. I, I really love the Great Movie Ride. It's probably my favorite attraction in the studios. Yes, unlike the Ellen attraction at Epcot, we mm -hmm. still ride and like the Great mm -hmm. Movie Ride. So it is dated, that that I agree with, but uh, it will be sad to see it go. But I'm hopeful. I mean, it sounds like this will be an awesome e-ticket attraction. I, I think I will enjoy it. It just, I wish it could have been, the one thing I wish it could have been someplace else and not replacing the Great Movie Ride. There's a number of attractions that I could think of it replacing. And I just find it very interesting that he says there's never been a Mickey ride before because you would think, I mean, you have a Mr. Toad ride, a Snow White ride, right. a, a never. Finding Nemo ride, Ratatouille. The only like, Mickey attraction I could think of is uh, the Mickey Mouse Review that uh, has long been closed. No, uh, no it's not the, a ride, but it's still the attraction, attraction now in the Magic Kingdom 
is is really a Mickey Mouse based attraction as well. Oh, I guess I, I thought it's more of a Donald, but I guess you're right. It it is uh, hosted Why can't by Mickey. I think of the name Mickey, of it? Mickey's Philharmonic. Yes, Mickey's so Philharmonic, right. it is not Mickey's. Donald's that's true. Philharmonic. That's true. So anyway, that's our thoughts on it, and we will be there for the last day of the Great Movie Ride. So let's move on to the next announcement, and here it is. So it's been about six months since we first hinted at our big plans for Epcot. And before we share some news about what's coming, Tom, I'd like to ask you a little bit about how we're approaching this work, because Epcot means so much to all of our fans. Sure. Well, Epcot has always been, from day one, an optimistic celebration of the real world, brought to life through the magic of Disney. It's, it's really kind of a living showcase of the world we have created and the world we continue to create together. It's a place where the real becomes fantastic and the fantastic becomes real. And while Epcot gets ready to celebrate, believe it or not, its 35th anniversary in Florida, the cool back up in Glendale, our imaginary team is busy at work planning for Epcot's future. And, and what a future we have in store. I mean, that's especially true when you consider a world showcase. It's a really special place where guests of all ages can experience the cultures from around the world in a global community. I guess love it. So I'm thrilled to announce we'll be adding a brand new attraction, Ratatouille. Yeah. To the right past the Eiffel Tower. It's going to be patterned after our popular attraction at Disneyland Paris. Guests are going to shrink down the size of Remy and join him on a crazy race throughout the kitchen and Gusteau's restaurant. Ratatouille is already the number one attraction at Disneyland Paris. And we really think it's going to be a great addition to Epcot. First of all, I love Ratatouille. I've, we've ridden it many, many times in Paris. I am very much looking forward to this. This also means this will be the only uh, World Showcase pavilion with two attractions. You'll have uh, Impressions de France. Hopefully. Oh, well, it, they said it's a new area, right, so I'm right. expecting Impressions de France to stay. That isn't an original day attraction. Mm -hmm. and One then, of the few opening day mm -hmm. attractions that still exist. I, I would not want to see it change if possible. And then Ratatouille. And oh, tremendous. Awesome. Love it fantastic attraction and wouldn't it be great if we got a Shea Remy restaurant too that right at the end, <laughs> right at the exit like at Disneyland Paris I, I really enjoyed that restaurant as well I just think it's really cool like right now Epcot is a festival park that when you go into World Showcase I don't mind just the shopping and dining but I think a lot of guests are looking for more as far as attractions and really you've got a couple movies and then a boat ride two boat rides now but really, that's about it. And um, especially during the little bit of downtime we have between festivals, it feels very slow in World Showcase where guests really don't maybe feel like they have as much to do. So I think this will be a huge draw for World Showcase. Absolutely. Probably maybe my number two favorite announcement of everything that has been announced. I think it'll be fantastic. Fan yeah, fantastic, fantastic and, and fantastic. fantastic. And there's no downside. We're not losing anything. So anyway... We can't wait. We're both excited. Let's move on to the next announcement. And as this blue sky artist concept drawing shows, we also have big plans for the front of Epcot. Now, it's going to continue to build on Epcot's celebration of creativity and ingenuity. That's right. Epcot is a reassurance that we are part of something great. If we can dream it, we can do it. And Epcot has always been a place where the real becomes fantastic where you can train to be an astronaut, where you can travel beneath the seas. But it's also become a place where the fantastic becomes real. For example, talking to a sea turtle named Crush, or soaring around the world in four and a half minutes. But now that fantastic is about to become real in a whole new way. That's because we're thrilled to announce today that Epcot will soon have a brand new e-ticket attraction based on the rock and action-packed world of Guardians of the Galaxy. This epitomizes our goals for Epcot in a way that stays true to the original ideals. It's also more timeless, more relevant, more family, more Disney. And it will really give fans, fans that sense of wow that they've come to expect from Disney. So the Guardians are going to take our guests on an out-of-this-world adventure, but it will still be very rooted in an Epcot story. In fact, 
The reason that the Guardians have come to Epcot in the first place is that young Peter Quill actually visited Epcot as a kid. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? So Tom, how in the world did you get that photo? Rocket stole it from the Guardian. Yeah, that collector. Yeah. Of course he did. So guests at Disney California Adventure already love stepping into the worlds of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And we're excited to give guests in Florida a chance to experience this world in a new way. Now the teams are working on all of this and more in time for the opening of Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary. So before I say anything about Guardians of the Galaxy, so you heard, if you can dream it, you can do it. A lot of people think it's Walt Disney, but it's not. It's Tom Fitzgerald, yes, who was standing right there the and just said it. the man himself who said his own quote, so yes. that's very cool. So, uh, but anyway, I, I don't really know what to think about Guardians of the Galaxy here. I, I mean, we really, I'm just going to say we really love the one in... Mission Cal Breakout. Yes, in uh, Disney California Adventure. I wasn't necessarily wanting it. I wasn't expecting to like it, but I loved it. So, um, you know... It, the Ellen's uh, universe of energy, whatever it's called, we, we never we never go on it. Very dated. Um, it is there. There are good elements of it, but uh, I, I think it's definitely it. time for a change. Look at this. I, I'm actually very very excited. I'm sure it will be a great attraction. That's it. I, I'm sure it will. And be. look, there's Groot. There's tall Groot. There's Gamora. They will always be there at the entrance, waiting. Well, we just like this that. concept art at, is showing at uh, <laughs> in Disneyland. The mission. Uh, the mission breakout. Uh, mission. Uh, yes, mission breakout. Um, we met Groot and Gamora, and um, again, that was the way they did that was uh, the outside building not as attractive as what I'm seeing here, but the inside was really terrific. So I'm hoping inside will be terrific here too. Yes, high expectations. Mm -hmm. I, I am very much excited about it. Let's move on to the next big announcement, and here it is. We all know that guests love dining at Epcot. It's one of the real keys of Epcot. And the restaurants there really are out of this world. But now we're about to create one that takes that literally. Adjacent to Mission Space will be a brand new table service restaurant that will invite you to travel high above the earth where you'll enjoy great meals and an even greater view. Now this really intrigues me. This could go either way. I am excited about it. I think anytime you have a themed restaurant like this, it could be great. Let's hope the food is out of this world too. Well, what do you think? You know, I'm not as big into the space theme of the restaurant. If the food is good, um, I mean, it could be... I like Viennapoli. Yes, <laughs> like yes, when yes, we're in Epcot, course. I go to Viennapoli yes, usually. Yes. This will probably be priced <laughs> above our price range also because it seems like it'll be an experience, something that is hard to get into perhaps. We'll see. I am excited about it, though. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, certainly it's it's better than the nothing that's currently adjacent <laughs> to, to Mission Space now. You know, I think it's just too early to know as far as food and as far as, I mean, we've seen one concept art picture, so we'll see you know, how the restaurant is. I don't expect it's something... Again, I'm very particular about the restaurants on property. I like the Boathouse. I like the Annapoli. There's a very small amount we go to, so it'll probably be like one place we'll try, and maybe... That will be it. Well, it is an <laughs> intriguing concept because once you come off of Mission Space, sometimes the last thing you want is a giant meal, if you know what I mean. Well, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. You know, I... I... I think it's always good to have theme restaurants. So I think for guests that will, it's a plus. So let's move on. This is a really big announcement coming up next. We also want to announce a brand new attraction coming to the Magic Kingdom. Over its 45 years, attractions at the Magic Kingdom have been a source of inspiration for all of Walt Disney Parks Resorts, including at our most technologically advanced park, Shanghai Disney Resort. So I think it's only fitting that it will be soon home to be Shanghai's highest rated attraction. That's right, Tron is coming to the As this video shows, there's a reason guests in Shanghai can't get enough of this thrilling fast speed ride. And I agree, it's a total rush. At Walt Disney World, it will sit in an entirely new space right next to Space Mountain. We're planning to open in time for the 50th.
So that is my most exciting announcement of all. This is awesome. I can't wait. I've really been uh, wanting to see the Tron attraction, but of course we haven't made it out to Shanghai Disneyland. This is so such a great uh, great thing. Two big e-tickets right next to each other in Tomorrowland. What 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 could, more could you ask for, really? Well, I mean, not only e-tickets, but e-ticket coasters, so which is you know crazy when you look at that and i just i can't even imagine it right now so i guess within the next four or so years we'll see that i haven't seen they haven't they didn't really talk dates on anything really except for before toy story 50th, land just before the 50th right and star wars land but mm -hmm. right so within like four years we also have the theater which we're not talking about uh which will be coming in but we can talk about that at some point um we aren't doing that today but but i just can't even imagine all our friends who have ridden tron Love it. I think the only other attraction they like better at uh, Shanghai Disney is oh, Pirates. Pirates, right, right. And I know we won't be getting one of those anytime soon. But yeah, this is just an awesome announcement. I'm so excited. And let's not forget, we are not losing the Speedway either. Uh, originally, there was talk about maybe the Speedway having to say goodbye to make room for it, but not the case. So uh, a win, win, win for all. Very exciting. Let's move on to our next big announcement. So as we all know, there was no bigger innovator than Walt Disney. And it's our honor and responsibility to carry out his legacy. His vision for Disneyland created the entire theme park industry and his big picture thinking, including themed transportation. So let's take the monorail. It debuted here in Anaheim in 1959, and guests obviously still love it today. <laughs> in fact, we hear that many young children who visit our parks think of the monorail or the tram as their very first attraction. So as many of you know, getting around Walt Disney World can take a bit longer than you really want. And quite frankly, that's understandable because the entire resort is roughly the size of the city of San Francisco. And that's why we're working to get you exactly where you want to go at Walt Disney World, all while having more fun along the way. So over the past several years, personal transportation, as you all know, has been revolutionized and changed our expectations as consumers. So since we're all about exceeding guest expectations and making every aspect of your vacation uniquely Disney, we are creating a new point-to-point -point transportation service in a way that only Disney can do. And as you can see, it's themed to the one and only Minnie Mouse. We're starting to roll out this service called our minivan service. <laughs> and when it's complete, it will take you everywhere you want to go at the Walt Disney World Resort and you'll ride in classic Minnie Mouse style. But we're not stopping there, because since we want you to have even more fun getting into our parks, I'm also proud to announce that we're building a whole new transportation system. Now, it may resemble an old favorite. The Disney Skyliner will soon give our guests The Disney Skyliner will soon give our guests a bird's eye view of Walt Disney World. This brand new system will connect all of these resorts with Disney's Hollywood Studios and the International Gateway at Epcot. Now, many of these gondolas are going to feature some of your favorite Disney characters. And what a better way to get around the resort than with your pals in the sky. So the minivan service already has been testing for at least a week. They did it free from the boardwalk, I think, for the first week, but we were in California. So now they're charging, I believe at this point, they're charging the $20 and they seat, I believe, six. So we had, I looked online and um, I don't understand every little bit of it, but I believe there'll be an app if there isn't one already. It may even be th through the Lyft app. Um, where you can book this. So if you're looking to go someplace, you have six people on property and you just want to go, you know, directly Get to some place, right. right? I mean, it's it's an option and you it's got Minnie Mouse and on it. And look how cool it is. You're paying, yeah. You're, yeah, the part of it is just riding in the mini van, but this, this is the coolest thing of all, the new gondola system. Right, this is the Disney Skyliner. It now i think they've said there's no air conditioning so i guess it's open air like you can see like you're looking out the window right, it looks here. like open air with bars so it's you're not going to fall out or anything but uh you know it'll be it'll be warm of course in the <laughs> summertime but remember the original uh skyway uh -huh. was open air and the disneyland uh skyway was also open air so it's not un, uh, unheard of to have an open air skyway here i think this is very exciting plus the theming i mean how cool you can have a haunted mansion uh bucket you know what i mean but if 
if you're on it, then you may not be seeing the haunted mansion. Like you want to see other people's haunted mansion. And look, you can see Mickey and Minnie there. But if you're in it, I wonder if you can still it see Minnie like and Mickey. It sounds like something from the Idiot Abroad. You would rather live across from the palace than live in the palace. Well, so, so I can look you can at see. it. Yes, I, I get it. I get it. So, um, but I don't know. I, obviously, we've only seen a, a small amount of concept art about it. But, uh, you know, it'll be interesting. It's not something we'll take all the time because it's not like we're always heading off to Disney's Art of Animation or some of the other resorts. So um, it should be it should be fun, you know, a little something new. Very exciting. And these are only the top Walt Disney World announcements from uh, from the big parks and resorts panel. Next week, we're going to have all the Disneyland uh, top announcements. So uh, much to look forward to. Speaking of Disneyland, we were just at Disneyland for a week and we tried out something brand new that was just rolled out while we were there. Why don't you uh, set us up and tell us about it? So we were there for the first day of Max Pass or we did it a couple days in and that's a, a digital fast pass system. There it costs $10 per day or $75 for an annual pass. So while I was setting it up online and paying for it, Jeff went off to uh, to do Fantasmic to get the Fast Pass for Fantasmic because the shows like that are not included. Right. So once we're in the park, you're able to activate the new Max Pass system. I can grab our annual passes, the physical passes, run over to this machine and quickly get Fantasmic Fast Passes. So the new updated version of Fantasmic open while we were there. The official opening day was July 17th, the birthday. We were there, of course. We're going to have a big segment next week talking all about the new Fantasmic show. Show, and we also did the uh, dinner package, but now back to Disney Max Pass. Right, and this only took like a minute to set up on the phone. It was very fast. Uh, we already had our information, our annual passes, uh, which we weren't planning on buying, but we ended up buying them. That's another story. Yes, that's a whole other story. Um, we're going back for Halloween, so that was really a good thing to do. So anyway, these are our names and all that. We uh, booked the fast pass, or linked, the max linked pass, the right? Tickets, mm -hmm. right? So it was very easy, as you said. Next step is you pick the park you want to go to, and uh, once you're in the park, there is a whole list of things. But the first thing we wanted to do was get Guardians of the Galaxy. That was the most popular fast pass while we were there. And what this lets you do is you can book the fast pass without having to physically go to the uh, kiosk at the ride to do it. You don't even have to be in the same park. So it's it's really amazing. We we did about 10 fast passes in one day so uh, you can really get a lot more done this way than if you were to try to do it on your own and not to mention it includes free photo pass downloads for each person that is uh, part of the uh, you know max pass and it, we did at least 10 and we could have done a few more um, you know we stopped at Starbucks for whatever for an hour mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't get into the park till 10 o'clock so you can see what the the wait time is and what time you can go you can see Haunted Mansion was like three minutes later so uh, you pick it's almost the instant, almost right. an instant uh, pick but for that one. That's probably not always going to be the case. So, um, but anyway, that is often how it is currently with some of the the attractions. Not like a Guardians, but like a Haunted Mansion, like Roger Rabbit, like um, Buzz Lightyear. So this was just so easy to use. I think it's easier than the Walt Disney World system. I like being able to do it the day of only because it allows everybody to have a chance. And another thing that changed is when you go to a kiosk and get a fast pass, you still get the little paper fast pass, but you do not use it. You use your park admission ticket to uh, to access the attraction. So it is now just a souvenir. Well, with the Max Pass, you don't get the paper at all. It's all done on your phone. You can even check in with the phone if you want. And I did try that and it actually works pretty well. I didn't try. I don't think I tried that. But anyway, you can see here, um, Haunted Mansion uh, was available seven minutes later. Roger Rabbit was like 20 minutes later. So it was really nice uh, with some of the attractions you could do that. Also, generally, um, until now, let's say you get a fast pass for Guardians at 9 a.m. and it's not till 5 p.m. It would be two hours before you are able to uh, get another fast pass. And that were, is the way it worked during our trip until now. And it was an hour and a half instead. So I don't know if paper fast passes or, you know, that type of fast pass, the other type of fast pass, which isn't even paper anymore, uh, will be two hours still or if it's all an hour and a half. Another advantage I found out myself is once you get on an attraction, let's say that you have a fast pass for Haunted Mansion at 12 noon. As soon as you go through and beep, beep, uh, beep in, you can instantly book another one before you've even ridden as long as you are 
counted as being beeped in to that attraction. So that's great. I mean, while you're riding, you are already waiting for your next attraction. And also everybody in the party has to have um, have paid for the fast pass to be able to use the fast pass. So this was, we were doing it on like the third day it started. So things will probably change some. Uh, as it goes on. And I want to mention at one point you went away to do some shopping and some other stuff. I was able to book fast passes for just me, just myself. So uh, that is another option. You don't all have to book at the same time. And when you rejoined me, I had uh, knew that you're coming back. So I went ahead and booked something for you. And, uh, you know, it's great. You didn't even have to be there. And we were all set to do some more, uh, some more rides. So now let's talk about another aspect of it. The photo pass, you get free photo pass for however many many days you are using the max pass and you can only download on the day that you purchase the max pass but like let's say you had pictures taken by photo pass the day before you can't download those i mean you'd have to pay for those downloads and it was a little confusing as far as the photo pass to get those because it looked like we didn't even have it um, I know you did a little something. Well, it on took that. it just took a moment for the uh, you know the little white letters that say that you have to purchase the pictures to go away. But I, when I went into the PhotoPass store, they said it was just uh, learning. It was only like the second or third day. Also, we should mention it includes ride photos, the ride download photos, and you don't even have to wait in line to uh, connect them. They have a number now on them, and you just punch them in on your phone. A and number you on almost, the photo. On the photo, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the one that's displayed at the end of the ride. And you can put that into your phone, and almost instantly, you'll get the ride photo right there on the phone, and you can share it or download it. So I think that was a really nice feature as well. I really like um, the MaxPass system a lot. So we may end up, I'm, I'm assuming we're gonna add that to our annual passes when we go back in September. And one thing I wanna say, what I like about Max Pass the most is unlike at Walt Disney World where you have to plan out your attractions months in advance and it's very difficult to get certain attractions, with Max Pass you can guaranteed get any attraction that day if you get there early enough. So if you want uh, Guardians, as long as you're there for opening, you will absolutely get a Fast Pass. If you want to go on um, the new ride at uh, Pandora, um, oh, Flight, Flight of, of passage. passage, you are out of luck if you are, uh, unless you book it the second they uh, they make them available. Like so. 60 days ahead and we can't get those. I like that it's same day. I will say though, Guardians of the Galaxy, line not always so long. It's Radiator Springs is, is really the hot ticket as far as fast passes. Like right now, today, 20 minute wait right now for Guardians of the Galaxy, which is pretty incredible. So anyway, that is another show. It's a super size show, just so much to talk about. We'll have much more next week from our California trip. We have more from Disneyland. We're gonna talk Universal, about uh, Warner Universal, Brothers. Warner Brothers, so, so much more. And of course the D23 Expo announcements, just tons and tons of stuff. Thanks everyone for listening. Thanks to our sponsors, MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. Right, and uh, the Epcot Food and Wine Festival is just a few weeks away. We have Christmas coming up. Check MEI Travel, Mouse Fan Travel out for the best deals really, not only that, but also great service uh, if you're looking to travel on any Disney vacation or anywhere else in the world. Not to mention Halloween time at Disneyland. I mean, that that got us to upgrade to annual passes and plan a trip back already. That was absolutely not in our cards, but it looks so good we couldn't help it. So uh, make sure you take <laughs> that into consideration when making travel plans. Well, not only do they have the Disneyland offerings now, but they have uh, Radiator Springs is gonna be dressed for, uh, for Halloween. Uh, so they're going to have the attractions Halloween based and uh, the Halloween characters like Radi the uh, Lightning and Queens going to be Halloween. So uh, anyway, we're show we're going to show all of less that than next two months week. away. We're, yeah, we'll have full coverage of all that. It looks uh, it looks amazing. Also, if anyone if you have any questions, be sure to put questions in the show notes. We will always be happy to answer any questions that uh, we can figure out on our show. That's something you know it only took us to what two hundred and thirty five shows to say that, but we're happy to answer questions just let us know I if have there's a anything. question you have what is your question is anybody still listening yes I, I, <laughs> does anybody make it to yes, the end right. I, I would like to know that too <laughs> this is the longest show ever so anyway that means we better wrap it up thanks again for listening have a great week and we'll see you all next week have a great week